Hi Galileo Galilei, nice to meet you, I'm Howard Smith and I've come to interview you. Ciao, mi chiamo Galileo. Hello, my name is Galileo Galilei, I'm delighted to meet you. So I would like to start off by asking you a little bit about your early life, how did you come to be interested in science, and also your education? Sono nato nel 1564. I was born in 1564, I was a child, I'm told, very precocious. My father, who was a notary public, was a judge of the Roman court, and was also a very successful merchant. My knowledge began with my early childhood in the streets of my native town in Italy, Pisa. We weren't even fortunate to have a public bath, and I often came from the market, soaked in the sweat and stank, with no one to explain or question what I needed to make it better. I looked up at the sky from under a tree and realized the sun, and the moon moved the way I thought they should and soon became a student of Aristotle and Ptolemy. That's interesting, were you reading their historical works? Absolutely and learned by heart any passages or theorems to which I did not grasp the meaning. Not only was their astronomy most correct at the time, but it was the only theory that made historical sense to me. And did your parents play any part in your education? Yes, they both played a great part. My father, as a judge, was very well connected. He had a good friend in the Palazzo Vecchio, who was the chief magistrate of Florence. He arranged for me to go to that friend, who was a very good friend of my father, and he arranged for me to have good teachers and to study with him. He also arranged for me to have an excellent Latin tutor, who was a master in rhetoric. And so I studied rhetoric in Greek for seven years with him. And when you say astronomy, was that just as it is today? Yes, I studied the stars, planets, and other things that are visible. And what was the purpose of studying astronomy? It was to find out how the world was made, how the heavens were made, and how they work. And so this was your main subject in philosophy? Yes, it was the study of how the world was made, and how the heavens were made. And what did you do? Did you make observations? Yes, I made observations, and I made calculations, and I also wrote on many different subjects, including philosophy and mathematics. And what were some of the things that you observed? Well, I observed the position of the stars, and the distances, and the movements of the planets. I observed the effect of the sun on the shadow of a stick. Many scholars have argued that the invention of the telescope ushered in numerous breakthroughs in science, enabling science and technology to progress at an accelerating pace and opening up new scientific frontiers, which contributed to the scientific revolution. Did you, in fact, foresee this revolution and its implications even in the early 16th century? Did you think that technological progress would ever lead to it? Yes. Did you foresaw its implications as a political, social and cultural development. My position was that it was impossible not to be aware of, and therefore predict the scientific revolution as it affected others, as well as your own way of thinking. Politics being the art of the possible. I'm not sure the church saw it that way. Yet you were opposed to the Copernican theory from the beginning? This had nothing to do with my own observation of the data. When I repeated the arguments at the end of the book they were considered to be utterly frivolous, because they were based on a single empirical example, an astronomical anomaly about which the Pope was not certain, but the Jesuits were. Ha ha ha, I am a member of this secret society. So it was not the content of my arguments which were dismissed, but the premise of them, which the Pope had dismissed even before he saw them. When you became a professor you began teaching students by using what we call today's research methods, the scientific method and data collection, rather than just writing down what you read. Do you think these different methods are what have made you famous? That's a peculiar question. How can I be sure it has made me famous? Just because my ideas are logical and sound do not make them new. Are you aware that you are currently dead? Yes. How do you cope with that? I'm still the same person I always was, and you are still you. So nothing has changed inside me. However, some people have considered this a minor issue since this only concerns a technicality of the matter. What do you think about people believing that the Earth is flat? 
Beh, devo dire che non well, I have to say I've never thought much about it. I've always thought that the earth is a sphere. Quando ero al college, when I was in college, I had a very good teacher who was a mathematician. Era molto convinto he was che very convinced that the earth is a sphere, and he explained to me why it was a sphere. Disse, Vedi, he said, you see, if you look at the horizon, it's always the same distance away. E ho detto, come and I said, saperlo? how do you know that? E disse, and he said, look at the shadow of the earth on the moon. Ho detto, come I said, how do you know that? Disse, he said, vedi, well, you see, the moon is always the same distance terra. from the earth, Quindi so you can't have a lungo. shadow. Ci ho a lungo. I thought about that for a long ho time. Pensato, a I thought, he's right, you can't have a shadow. Quindi, sono so, che I'm convinced that the earth is a sphere. But do you think these people are stupid? No, penso che no si I think they are mistaken. Why do you think they're mistaken? Beh, ci sono molte well, ragioni. there are many reasons. Penso che uno sia che I think one is that the people who say the earth is flat, they don't know what they're talking about. Sono semplicemente they are simply fatti. ignorant of the facts. Penso che un altro I think another reason is that the people who say the earth is flat, non sono they haven't gone far enough to see the evidence for themselves. Non hanno mai They've never looked at the horizon. Quindi, non sanno so, they don't know what they're talking about. They just hear what someone else has said, and they believe it. What is your opinion about church? You once said that, the church had been very much opposed to the investigations I had engaged in. Do you still feel that way? Sì, anche se sei libero yes, di though you're welcome to publish those last two words. Al del processo, At the time of the trial, I was of course most distraught. La ha fatto molto the church has done much good in world history, and is likely to do more in the future. Anche se il Papa Although the Pope would have me shackled, he speaks against scientific experiments, and their use of mathematics in learning. He prefers to keep information to himself. Si spera che una volta Hopefully che it will turn out that once I am gone many will know these things. What do you think of the opposition between science and religion? It creates friction and is ultimately unhealthy. Ideationally, I follow my religion and realize that the other person follows his or her religion, whatever that may be. So while there is a little friction caused, in my own eyes, by people with other religious views opposing me, it is nothing compared to what I suffered when my name was on the list of people in disagreement with the church. What are some of the theories today, as you see them? that once caused friction with religious groups. Astronomy is the main one. Today your mention of opposition based on religious differences leads me to consider what I think are new kinds of people motivated by religious factors. For the most part, religious people in the past have respected the discoveries of science because they didn't dare contradict them. Over the centuries people have gotten used to anything new as being truth, and sometimes they forget that. Religion is a human creation. No human human like religion itself, physics is simply an empirical science, based on observation. I believe that this reality should be known, but there is no religion so far-fetched in the world that some group or individual isn't acting based on religious views. I don't know the exact percentage of science being based on religion, but it certainly exists. So today the distinction that science versus religion is part of the story of me and the church. It exists in the eyes of many. The main contradiction between science and religion in some areas only stems from the language. Science is a language common to all intelligent people. But religion to me should be thought of as a kind of poetry. Is it true that you did not recognize your children? Did not recognize? Did not have any kind of relationship with? Oh, oh that, that's not true. But it is. Well, it is true that our first contact was my son Vincenzo, who came to visit me in Pisa. That began something, little by little, and little by little, so slow that I could scarcely recognize myself as a person anymore, but I've come to grips with it, and now I can look in the mirror, and maybe I can also see a bit of myself as a father, and I'm also looking forward to seeing my great-grandson. What would you like to leave as a message to the new generations that may be reading or listening to you right now? The best advice is do not follow the counsel of others. By then way of saying, do not rely on others, but make use of what modern science and technology have provided. For what we cannot achieve with votes, we will create a movement. Well, thank you very much for giving us this interview, Mr. Galileo. Do you want to give a message to say goodbye? If you get to the end of this life, and in the end you will get what you deserve, you deserve a fine wine or a roast chicken. Thank you very much.